This is Paul Lewis. I'm an American Baptist missionary who has had the privilege of serving for over 20 years in Thailand. Before that, of course, in Burma, working with Lahu and Aka people. In these pictures, I'd like to take you to northern Thailand, to a lovely Lahu village. Lahu is spelled L-A-H-U. And this is the time of their New Year celebration. In their Lahu dance, it's the Lahu men who blow these lovely gourd pipes. Here, this man is dancing his way up the path in the village toward the head man's house so that he will join with the other dancers who are there. This Lahu couple is getting ready to go to the dance too. The man is warming up with his gourd musical pipe. The lovely decorations you see on the woman is silver tree in the middle, there's always one man on the outside who carries a tray of food. This is an offering to their head man for helping them and leading their village during the past year. In this Lahu Christian village, which is named Goshen, by the way, a biblical name, we see the pastor in the background and people in the village who are dancing around this tree, and they'll be doing it for most of two days during their New Year celebrations. I asked three of the dancers to step out just a moment and let me take their picture. The man on the left, a Bible school graduate who is using his training and his energy very well for Christ as he guides in a hostel. Uh, the woman in the middle, by the way, is now in Los Angeles, America, but she and her husband are hoping to go back before too long and help in Thailand. The one on the right is working in Thai tribal crafts. People just love to sing. Uh, these are some of the members of a choir group that was going to one of the Baptist conventions. They hold a Lahu Baptist convention once every year. These Lahu Christians just love to sing, and it's beautiful. This is a very dedicated woman. She's had Bible school and now working with her husband. They're in 100% Christian service. Now we move on to another type of Lahu. These are Lahu Nyi people who live up above the village I just showed you, and they're having their New Year's too, and it's done in quite a different way. Wonderful people, uh, but they have a hard time making a living off these hillsides you see in the background. Well, they, such as this, the Lahu Nyi girls dress up in their bright outfits, and you'll notice there's a great deal of red in it. This is why they are called Lahu Nyi, which means the red Lahu, but it does not mean that they are communists. In the Lahu Nyi religion, they believe very much that at New Year's time, they need to wash each other's hands and feet in a way of showing respect. And then for the Sha, which means God in their language, they pour this water out to help to purify their lives and their village at New Year's time. Have a Hoye, which means a temple. In this temple, one of the things they do is to play this gourd musical pipe. But in their case, it's the women who do it and not the men. You see the various offerings they've made to the Sha, which means God. The temple that the Lahu Nyi have, they spend much of their time making beeswax candles. As these are burned, it's to bring them blessing. And it's also part of their prayer to the Sha, or God. Another group of Lahu is called Lahu Shi, which means literally yellow Lahu. They too enjoy these gourd pipes, and we see some of the men and women gathering around as they begin to celebrate their New Year time. The Lahushi women and girls, you'll notice, love to dress up in their very best for New Year's, and we see a great deal of silver here. By the way, some of these are refugees who came over from Laos, and a few of them are presently living in America. From the time they're just small children, the Lahu Shi women have holes in their ears where they keep getting a larger and larger plug of silver. This is part of their decoration. This 13-year-old girl is proud of her outfit. Her mother has worked on it for many, many hours. And by the way, the year after this, this young girl, only 14 years of age at the time, was married. Now, I hate to confuse you, but there's another group of Lahu Shi, which are called Lahu Shi Bankyo. And this man 
is an old patriarch out in the village not too far from Cheng Rai, where Elaine and I live. His name is Japu. We see Japu here on the far left with his children and their spouses. Yes, that's right. Uh, these are his children and their spouses. You can see why family planning is needed out there in North Thailand. We see here the grandchildren included, and it makes quite a mob of Lahu, doesn't it? So far in this particular village, there are no Christians, but there are many who are very interested. And when we were in a village near here, not long before leaving Thailand, there were several people from this village who came. It was to a New Year's service, and we talked about Christ and about their following Christ, and we know that many of them are definitely interested. This is a representative from the La Bouchelle group. So far, there has been one village in which they have become Christians, but it looks as if many villages are very interested right now in perhaps following Christ. These La Bouchelle people are really great, great folks. It's fun just to be around them. Wonderful sense of humor. One time Elaine and I were going to a, a La Bouchelle village and we were amazed when we came to a place where the road was washed out. Here a La Bouchelle man was driving this truck and, and these girls were sitting in the back having a good time. There are just lots of change taking place among these Lahu people. When you think of them, even though these folks are illiterate, yet they've been able to purchase a car and purchase the motorcycle that you see here. There has been such a tremendous need among the young tribal girls out in northern Thailand, many of them being tricked into prostitution, for example. Elaine and the young woman you see here, Lauren Bethel, who is also an American Baptist missionary, they felt, you know, we need to start a place where we can help these young girls so that, well, they won't become prostitutes, so they'll get some education. And so that in the future, if there are those we can help out of prostitution, we can bring them into this new life center, which it's called, and help them in many ways. We see Lauren Bethel talking to the house mother of one of the houses, a Lahu young woman, Faye by name, who has grown and developed in just a thrilling way. Another house mother in this new life center is this Akha young woman. Her name is Achao, a very dedicated Christian. She is wanting to go on and not only get an education in the school she's going to, but also be able to go to, to Bible school and later serve her own people, the Akha people. Speaking of Akhas, uh, let's go to a typical Akha village. For Elaine and I have been working not just with the Lahu, but also with the Akha people. Here we see a very typical village scene. Here we are looking at a typical Akha home in front of it. We see the women out sewing, sewing various bits of their outfit. For you can see that they have really a very intricate, a very beautiful outfit that they wear. The Akha people make their own furniture. Here you see a man in the village who is a very good stool maker. The one he is sitting on, he made himself, and now he's making a new one to sell. Every year, Akha women spend hundreds of hours making their outfits. Notice the woman on the left. She's holding some of the thread with her toes. The Akha people just love music, very much like the Lahu in that sense. Here's a young man taking his drum ready to go to the dancing ground where they're celebrating their New Year's. Often the old men in the Naka village sit around smoking their tobacco pipes. And by the way, this is not an opium pipe. Uh, an opium pipe is very different and you have to smoke it inside the house while you're lying down. Of course, if you're a young Naka man looking for a bride, then you want to get fixed up like this. And this might be the young woman he's interested in. 
Of course, the young woman has to get all dolled up, you understand. Uh, here she is trying to get her hair to work just right, and to do that, she has to spit onto that uh, silver skewer that she has there to push it up into her hair to make it look just right. Here is a lovely contrast of two Akha women. The one on the left is a married woman. The one on the right is her younger sister who is not married yet and wears a different type of headdress. Among the Akha people, rice is a very, very important item, not just as food, it's virtually a part of their religion. When they go out to plant their rice, the first time they build a little shrine to the rice, right in the field, and then the woman wearing a white skirt notice for this special occasion, she makes some holes just above that shrine and plants rice there first. And then they go and plant it along the hillside, the mountainside. Yeah, this is mountain rice. Of course, we often think of it just growing in irrigated places, but the tribal pe people plant it on the mountainside. The man goes ahead using this long bamboo dibble stick, making the holes, and his mother then, wearing her white skirt, begins to plant the rice. Notice the mountains in the background. On the other side of the one you see at the very back there on your right is Burma. We are that close to the border. But notice too that the other mountainsides have had what, what is called Sweden cultivation or slash and burn cultivation where the trees are all cut down and then it's burned off before they plant their crop. As they go along, the Akha man is singing. Ahoho is called in Akha. This is a song to both Apumie, or God, and to the birds, asking the birds not to eat the seed, asking the ants not to carry it away. The old mother takes a break in her planning, and she sings this Ahoho too, and in this song she is reminding God that he is the one who gave them rice. He is the one that will determine that they continue to live. She is asking that the ancestors also look down upon this field just planted, that the family might have enough rice for the year. On the day they begin their rice planting, the Akka have a, spe a special ceremony to the ancestors. Apolo is called in the Akka language, and rice is a very important part of that ceremony. The rice that has been cooked is taken out to the outside of the house where the man of the house is pounding it. The wife comes out and helps him to get it off the piece of wood he's using to pound it with. And this is very tricky, you know, it's great the way they can use bamboo in so many ways. That's a strip of bamboo she has there that she's using to pull off that sticky rice. The women of the household next make the rice which has been pounded into little rice cakes. And these will be offered to the ancestors in the ancestral offering, which they have nine times a year. What we're looking at here in the corner of the room is a very important basket. In this, they keep the paraphernalia they use in making their ancestral offerings. Now, let's move up and look just above that basket. There's a bamboo section which is tied to one of the roof poles there. And that bamboo section is known as the Apopolo, the ancestral altar, in that they keep the last nine stalks of rice that they harvested. This is for the ancestors. The man of the house then takes a chicken, a very special chicken, and butchers it as part of the offering to the ancestors. We go to another Akha village this time. Uh, notice that the headdresses are, are rather different. These are called Ulo Akha. And this is a special ceremony, not related really to the ancestral offering, where they have a thumping ceremony. That's the only English word I know to use for it. You see the overturned pig trough down there? Well, they use these bamboo sections and they thump. Okay. Okay. The women really have a wonderful time doing this. after they've been thumping like this for perhaps 15 or 20 minutes, then they take off and go to a, another home to have a special celebration for that elder in that, built, in that uh, house as well. In this Akha village, there had just been a death. And we see the village coming in 
to help one of their fellow villagers is in trouble. And so they gather there and help in many ways. On the porch outside the home where the old granny died, there's a lot of activity as they are getting meat